Welcome back to the West End of London. We've made our way to Old Crompton Street. And on Old Crompton Street, you can find all types of boys. You can find curious boys, interesting boys, and then you can find the Jersey boys. <laughs> the main man is uh, Ryan Malloy. How are you? Good, man. Very good. Yeah, we're definitely a bunch of hey-sexuals over here. So <laughs> like, hey, 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 hey. That's what the boys are on uh, in Jersey Boys for definite. How are you doing? Because the last time I saw you was in Taboo. Uh, that was quite a different role to Frankie Valley, wasn't it? It was. I mean, in Taboo, I played... Uh, well, it, it's similar in some ways... Uh, I played Steve Strange, who was, um, you know, he was he was a living he was a living icon, and, and he used to come down and, and watch the show and put his eyeliner on in the dark, which is similar to Frankie because because he's alive. How are you doing? Because this is a remarkable role to be offered in the first place. It's probably one of the biggest roles in the West End because from the beginning to the end, you don't stop, and you have to sing the most extraordinarily high notes. I've never heard anything like it. Yeah, man, it's 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 an incredible sing. I mean, there's there's over 21 songs that I have to sing myself, and it was it was crazy when I went to see Mel, uh, Ron. Melrose in New York and he gave me the list of songs that I had to sing it was just it was just like yeah I thought oh these are all the songs in the show he goes no these are your songs these are all your I was like all right it's all right isn't it but um yeah it's been good I mean the rehearsal process you know it's been, it's been like four months they got me really ready I, I um spent a lot of time in Nashville with Bob Gaudio and he helped me so much with the tone and you know the feel of everything and you know getting into the soul of Frankie and told me some fantastic stories you know what I mean which I which I'm not allowed to repeat and <laughs> if, I, if I do I'll be rolled up in a cob and dumped in the back of some <laughs> you know, Laurie and never seen again. Probably buried underneath some bridge or something, yeah. holding up some bridge. But um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was just a fantastic experience. You know, it's been great. Help me with how you get those high notes. Well, I, I have a fantastic dresser. His name is Johnny, and just basically when I'm not, he just kicks me in the ghoulies, gives me a quick kick in the ghoulies, and uh, you know, woo, <laughs> and and off I go. I mean, the thing is about you know the songs are it's it's really um you've really got to come from the angle of you can't you can't push those songs. You really have to swim inside of them. You know what I mean? The fantastic songs to sing, and I've got a great um I've got a great background. I, I studied with a man called Paul Becky when I when I used to live in Newcastle, who um trained me in in bella canto, which is an opera technique. And, uh, you know, that was a fantastic foundation. I've been singing, you know, all my, all my life. So it, it was good. I mean, you always learn new things. And we've got a we fantastic vocal coach who's called Katie Agrester, who gives us various, you know, things to keep the voice strong. And it's, it's, it's brilliant. She's got this new technique where you just basically pull on your tongue with, with you know, with a, with a, with a little uh, face cloth. And, uh, you, you know, you do all these, um, all these scales that she's uh, devised, you know, from doing all of the companies. But it really works. It keeps you loose. And uh, you, she just says, whenever, you know, you're feeling a little tight there, just have a little snore. Just have a little snore. Just loosen it up. Stay loose. So uh, she's great, man. As soon as you go out, you get, uh, come, come flying in, you know, when you're 16 years old into silhouettes and you don't come off until you're like late 50s in um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, I mean, it is a real journey. I mean, it's fantastic for an actor to be able to go on that journey and to find out all those, you know, deep, dark secrets about yourself over a two hour period. It's, I mean, it's a great, great adventure. And also as a singer, it's, it's a fantastic challenge. How paranoid are you about getting a cold or getting ill or not being vocally fully prepared? It must be terrifying because you really are the show. It was bad because when we were coming up to press night, everybody started, of course, everyone starts getting ill. Everyone starts getting ill around you. We started having all these things. And it was like the symptoms were, like, oh, yeah, I've got a pass from, oh, I've got a pass from. And then it was like, I was like, oh. So, you know, you immediately just, you know, kind of go into hyper panic, you know, crazy obsession mode and, you know, go to, you know, you know, fresh and wild, start loading up with, um, what was it? What was it? It was oil of oregano. I was hitting oil of oregano. This the my elixir, the elixir <laughs> helped me through, man. The elixir got me through, and I tried to buy elixir for the for the other um, for the other four seasons, and it was only it was only Phil Bullcock who took the elixir. Um, Stephen Ashfield <laughs> threw up, and Glenn Carter was afraid of it. But both of those boys, they were ill, <laughs> but me and Phil were all right thanks to the elixir. <laughs> when I look at your training, it's quite remarkable. I mean, you've been here in the UK, then you went to LA, and then you went to New York. Do you think that's why you're here today? Because you've had the American discipline drummed into you well I, you know I come from a, um, a really tough background in North Shields and you know and, and my mother was always really strong so it was you know I had a lot of mental toughness from, from my family background and that was enabled me to you know, take the challenge when I was when I was you know just went over to LA when I was 19 I just you know I just went over there you know I just followed the dream and, and it was good and I just you know dived in the deep end and I was there for like you know I think it was like four years or something and it was sleeping on couches and you know just really going for it doing karaoke competitions to, to make a couple of bucks you know so we could buy some spaghetti so we could eat I mean, but I was surrounded by some of the the most greatest singers you've ever heard. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic. You know, when I was over there, we used to sing in this place called the Kibbutz Room. It's this Jewish bakery, which is on uh, Fairfax. And out the back, they had this blues night where just every 
the like, top singer uh, who was either signed or unsigned would just come out of it because it was pitch black, come out of the darkness and just get up on the stage and Wah! And it was just a fantastic experience to be around that at, at the age of 19. And it really, you know, inspired me a lot. And it, it's given me a lot of the courage that I have still today. You have incredible energy and the most peculiar speaking voice. Is that kind of half North Shields, half LA and a bit of New York thrown in? Yeah, do you know what I mean? I sound like, the guy, I sound like um, Christopher Lambert from Highlander, <laughs> man. I sound, I'm so Russell Nash dies tonight. Yeah, when I was in LA, I had, to, I had a really strong uh, broad Geordie accent. And it talked so fast they couldn't understand what I was doing. And I was, I was, getting, I was going up for loads of auditions and I was getting these auditions. And I was um, they were like, right, fantastic. If you, if you can just read this piece of script and they're like... Okay, thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, next, uh, and it was like my accent was just always so out there. So I had to study these um, Samuel French tapes to like get you know a Midwest uh, non-dialect accent. And then it was just at that point I got a record deal in London, so I had to come back. So that was it on the plane. Something happened to my voice where I don't I don't know. It just bailed out with a parachute. <laughs>